What's up everybody? I'm Logan and this is Heirloom Builders. Today we're installing concrete on the footers for a new home on a super old home site near Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Today we're installing the concrete footers. Because it's a crawl space made of concrete blocks, we need a concrete footing to support that block foundation wall. And so today what we're doing is we're pouring concrete in a trench that we dug to make that footing. Uh, the first thing that we do before we dig our footings is we strip the topsoil off the site around where the foundation will be. That way we don't have any compaction and we don't compact and ruin the topsoil that's good for growing plants after the house is done. Once we've stripped the topsoil, then we can do our rough grading, which means that we're basically creating contours on the landscape to divert water around the house so that we don't have a muddy mess when surface water from rain flows down the hill and towards our building site. We're gonna divert that water around the foundation and away from the house. And then have a surveyor come out and pin the locations of the building corners. Um, we had to tweak it a little bit to get it exactly uh, north-south, polar north-south, instead of magnetic north-south because I like a solar orientation that's gonna maximize our passive solar gain and also our ability to generate power. So we have our surveyor pin the corners and then um, the grading guys come out and before we start digging, what we've gotta do is connect those corners. So we stretch, we measure out eight inches from the foundation corner, which is the outside edge of our footing and we, take a string and pull it tight and then spray paint a white line on the ground to mark where we have to dig our trench. So. Shh, Murray, please don't sing for a second. And then once we mark out the inside and outside of our footing, we can go ahead and take a mini excavator and dig the trench all the way around. In this case, we're on a slope that slopes about five feet from the top side down to the bottom side over here. Um, so we have to step our footing down 24 inches twice so that we have, um, so that we don't have to be five feet deep underneath the ground with our footing on the high side. Um, we're gonna kind of follow the terrain with our crawl space. So we'll have a little bit of slope in our crawl space. And we've dug it out a little bit more on this side as you can see behind me so that we have a little bit more headroom in the crawl space for a water heater, a pressure tank, um, and just a little bit of extra storage room. So right now we're filling up this trench with concrete. Um, but before we can do that, we dig the trench with some steps to accommodate the terrain. And we set two courses of number four rebar up on chairs to keep them off the dirt so that they hold the concrete footing together over time. Um, and then we set grade stakes, which are pieces of rebar that we hammer down to the right height, which is gonna simulate the top of our concrete footing. So when we pour concrete, like we're doing right now, we know exactly how high to fill that trench so that the top of the footer is perfectly level all the way around. That way our concrete block masons can set blocks on a flat and level footing. And they don't have to cut a bunch of blocks or build up the surface of that footing within it, an excessive amount of mortar. I'd rather be a little low than a little high too, you know? Right. They can always put a little more mortar in. They don't want to cut block. So what are you doing right now? knocking the rocks down so that when the brick mesa comes he doesn't have a rock protruding up and it's blocking a block or anything like that and it's easier for the masons to write on it they can mark it a lot easier when it's finished just a hair other than a rake just a rake finish yeah you mean for snapping lines or marking right writing on it something like that they can actually draw something on it. So explain um, briefly how you get those grade stakes 
um, where you want them and what the purpose of that is. So we'll have gray stakes every four or five foot. And it's all based on our ditch elevation. I'm sure they're all gonna be 10 inches higher than our ditch elevation. And they're all based on the laser up there at the top. All our steps are in increments of eight inches. So these steps were 24 inches. So that's how we come up with our grade stakes. So how do you know just about where that rebar is, that, that grade stake? So what we'll do is we'll paint a line Side of the ditch over here, just a visual indicator of where we're at or where they're at in the ditch while we're pouring. That way we can reference that when we're pouring so we can find And so you fill up those bulkheads first off, just to let that concrete kind of set up so it's not so much weight on the bulkhead? Correct, that's the weakest point when we're pouring. We always pour those first and let them set up. That way the concrete doesn't seep through when we pour above it. So that's it. We're gonna we're gonna get this footing poured, and we're gonna be ready to stack some block next week. So um, we just beat a snowstorm coming this weekend, so I'm really excited um, that we're getting this done right now, and um, I look forward to sharing with you all the progress on this new job. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.